Want an easy way to see if you could save money on car insurance? GEICO gives you three. Call 1-800-947-AUTO, go online to GEICO.com, or stop by the GEICO office nearest you. Three ways you could save 15% or more. This this is the Stephen A. Smith Show Podcast. I'm Stephen A. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the latest edition of the Stephen A. Smith Show, coming at you as I love to do every weekday over the airwaves of ESPN Radio. That's 98.7 FM New York. That's 710 ESPN LA. That is, of course, nationwide over the airways of ESPN Radio, Sirius XM style channel lady. To get through the obligatories, the number to call up as always is 866-729-ESPN. That's 866-729-3776. That's 866-SAY-ESPN. If I sound like I'm in a, I'm in a bad damn mood, I am. If I sound like I'm pretty ticked off, I am. Do you have any idea what today is? What a day like today is? We had a great week five of the NFL season. We got the Yankees tying it up with the Indians. We got the Dodgers, okay, led by Cody Bellinger, clinching their series against Arizona Diamondbacks with a 3-1 victory last night. We got the Boston Red Sox out of it because the Houston Astros handled their business. We got the Chicago Cubs and the Washington Nationals going after it. We got a whole bunch of stuff to get into, a whole bunch of stuff. You can compare Bellinger to Derek Jeter when he was a rookie. You can think about him and Aaron Judge in New York and what they're doing for the game of baseball. You can think about the fall, October, and what it breeds. All of this stuff. It's stuff to get into. And, oh, by the way, Lonzo Ball and the Lakers are playing a preseason game tonight when you got the City of Angels salivating at the thought of this brother, Lonzo Ball, balling officially beginning next week for the NBA season opener. We got all of that to get into. We got got LeBron James happy with the all-star game changes, which is contradictory to what I feel. We got all of this stuff to talk about. So much in the world of sports that is supposed to be a reprieve, a relief from what ails us in our everyday lives as a society. And I got to sit here this morning and I got to talk about that damn Jerry Jones, owner for the Dallas Cowboys, who decides that he doesn't want to wax eloquently about the business of football or at least admitting that he's doing that. Instead, he wants to get all political, feigning patriotism, giving players demands that violates all kinds of rights. And everybody's sitting there. You got a country divided because there are some who obviously disagree with him, and there are some who march lockstep with him. Now, for those of you who've been living under a rock in the world of sports and don't know what the hell I'm talking about, let me remind you. Jerry Jones, owner for the Dallas Cowboys, same individual who kneeled with the players before ultimately standing during the national anthem, decides to go public with his declaration that the NFL, that that, that his players for the Dallas Cowboys will absolutely, positively, Stand for the national anthem no matter what. Ladies and gentlemen, there is nothing in a collective bargaining agreement with the players that absolutely positively mandates that these players stand. It suggests you should, but it doesn't mandate it like the National Basketball Association. So how is it that the NFL that the NBA has a policy in place, but the NFL does it. But an individual owner who has something to say about the bylaws that exist within the NFL's constitution decides that individually he's going to invoke and enforce policies, procedures, stipulations, or whatever you want to call it towards the players. You got to be kidding me. And you know what's real weak about all of this that really, really gets on my last damn nerves about it? Jerry Jones is trying to come across as the muscle man here that you know what? He's really taking a stance on behalf of the red, white, and blue. Oh, stop it. Just stop it. 
Would he be doing this if Richard Sherman was his star? Would he be doing this if Michael Bennett was his star? Would he be doing this if Malcolm Jenkins of the Philadelphia Eagles were his star? I don't think so. See, it's real easy to do when Jason Witten, your future Hall of Fame tight end, would never take a contrarian position to this issue than Jerry Jones. It's real easy to do when the Des Bryant and Ezekiel Elliott of the world are in no position. No position whatsoever to engage in any level of insubordination whatsoever, considering their check it past or in Ezekiel Elliott's pray case, the check it present. Dak Prescott's a second year quarterback. Would you have taken this position if it's Troy Aikman? How about Tom Brady or Drew Brees or Aaron Rodgers? Would you have done it then? I would have far more respect for Jerry Jones if the man just came out and said, you know something? I'm a businessman. I own a football team. I'm not getting involved in the politics. And ladies and gentlemen, call me whatever you want. But I don't want to hear no damn things about protests. I don't want to see any protesting at my games on behalf of my players because it's going to compromise me with my sponsors who pay the bills. And these players like get paid, so I suggest you take your protest to some other venue, but it ain't going to be at the games games for my team because you ain't compromising my bottom line. I'd have more respect if he did that. I, and it's plausible. But he's not even doing that. Hiding behind the red, white, and blue. You got to be kidding me. And then you got the president, Donald Trump, once again taking another shot at the National Football League. And why? What is he saying? Massive tax breaks that the NFL receives, but they allow our players to disrespect the the, 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 the red, white, and blue, our flag, and all of this other stuff. This is what the president said. But, ladies and gentlemen, it's patriotism with him, isn't it? It couldn't be because he couldn't get an NFL team. He couldn't merge with the NFL when he was a part of the USFL, and he tried to convince the owners to do the same. Couldn't be that. Couldn't be the fact that in 2014 when he wanted to own the Buffalo Bills, He was nixed of that opportunity, and that cost him billions, which was what precipitated him or provoked him to run for the presidency to begin with. Oh, couldn't be that, huh? I mean, how how much longer do we as American citizens got to walk around here playing a role of straight suckers? Straight suckers. Acting like this is about the red, white, and blue. I'm not going to even go there about that. That wasn't Colin Kaepernick's original. I'm tired of that subject. I want to get back to sports personally. I'm tired of it. But if we're going to bring Colin Kaepernick up, this clearly wasn't his intent. He said oppression, oppression, inequality, brutality on part of police officers, police, law enforcement and community interaction with one another. Those were the issues, not the red, white and blue. But we don't even have to get that technical. You know where we could go with this? You really going to sit here with a straight face as individuals who swear you have a modicum of intelligence with you, if not more. You really going to sit here and act like this president don't have an axe to grind with the NFL? That that isn't, that isn't the impetus behind all of this? You really going to fall for that okie doke? That's what y'all are? Y'all are going to play the role of straight suckers like that? You don't think that he has an ax to grind with NFL owners who have cost him billions and that is what's behind all of this? You have no, you don't think that at all, huh? Has nothing to do with it, huh? Nothing. This man has attacked CEOs on his own economic council. He's attacked members of his own cabinet. Once upon a time, his own attorney general. Recently, his own treasury secretary. This man has attacked Senator Bob Corker, who's a Republican. He's attacked John McCain, a Republican. They never cost him billions. But he'll go after all of those people, but he don't have an axe to grind with NFL owners. Are you kidding me? When will you all wake the hell up and see what's going on here? 
I mean, this is ridiculous. The stupidity of so many people, it's, 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 it's quite alarming. It really is. 866-729-ESPN. That's 866-729-3776. And then Jerry Joes come out here talking about the players. They will stand or else they won't play. You know what? I'd call his bluff. Will Kane actually made me laugh today on first take talking about Jerry Jones is about two things, money and his winning. Stop right there. You mean his money. Because when the hell has he won in the last 22 years? Clearly he ain't about winning. Clearly. Because the Dallas Cowboys haven't won a damn thing in the last 22 years. Last time the Dallas Cowboys won, I had an afro. Don't get me started with this. Wake the hell up. Usually I tell you to just listen to my man Joe Madison in the morning on Sirius XM channel 126. He'll wake you up with facts, with knowledge, with lessons that he gives callers and beyond on an everyday basis. But this is the afternoon we're talking about here, ain't it? Want to be a part of the show? Hit Stephen A. up weekdays from 1 to 3 Eastern at 866-729-3776. Computer, execute 12.4p operation. Optimizing algorithm. Running encryption packet alpha. Night, night. Oh, I don't feel so good. What? What is it, computer? Is it hot in here? It feels hot in here? I feel a little clammy. I should lie down or something. A computer with a virus? Surprising. What's not surprising? How much you could save by switching to GEICO. Those oysters Rockefeller were a mistake. GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. You're listening to the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Action. There's another thing to make sure it can stand up under scrutiny of courts, under scrutiny of the league. And right now, there's nothing that permits them to be able to have that bright line rule that lets them say, hey, you can make a rule, sit a guy down, take his money. So that's where the fight's going to be. And even if the fight goes all the way to the NFL and goes through arbitration, as you know how that works, and if the NFL sides with Jerry Jones, you better believe it's a federal court fight. And there's a lot of other arguments that could come in that players could make to say, this is not fair. They could try to say that the rule is overbroad, that it's not defined clearly, and try to get the federal courts involved. So there's a difference between can you do it? I think he can do it. But can he enforce it and keep it and hold that rule in place? That's going to be a tough one. That was Ryan Smith, legal analyst for ESPN, discussing uh, player alternatives, uh, what they could do to offset or push back towards Jerry Jones if indeed this is a rule he tried to um, implement of his own. Again, it's not a part of the NFL collective bargaining agreement, which speaks to the fact that there's no violation of NFL rules here. What Colin Kaepernick did, what these players have done, is perfectly within the rules. And here's the other thing. Marshawn Lynch, beast mode, has rarely, if ever, stood for the national anthem. He has sat down with Green Berets, who have spoken to Colin Kaepernick, articulated was the ultimate sign of disrespect. And that's why Colin Kaepernick took a knee. Isn't it amazing that nobody has said a word to Marshawn Lynch? Not a word. Nothing. Absolutely, positively nothing. One time, I think that if I remember correctly, correct me if I'm wrong, Nuno, my producer, Nuno, Jonathan, my board op, Cat Pastor, correct me if I'm wrong. Was it one time Marshawn Lynch sitting on a cooler eating a banana? Sitting on a cooler eating a banana while the national anthem was being played and not a word was said about him. And he's a member of the Oakland Raiders. But Colin Kaepernick can't find a job. Where's the consistency? Where is it? And then we got this thing, the, 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 just the height of ignorance. Our former colleague at ESPN, Mr. Mike Ditka, getting quoted, no oppression in the last 20, in the last 100 years that he could tell. No oppression. This is a man that was alive during the civil rights era, ladies and gentlemen. He was alive when Jim Crow laws were in full effect. 
He was alive before the Voting Rights Act. He was alive during the Rots riots and, 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 and what happened in Selma, Alabama, and what happened in Newark, New Jersey. He was alive for all of this. He was alive for the assassination of Malcolm X. Alive for the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. No oppression in the last 100 years. These were the words that actually came out this man's mouth. Just ignorant beyond comprehension. I'm not calling him ignorant. ignorant. I'm saying his words were. I mean, he he basically did everything but tell folks to go back to Africa or wherever else the hell you came from. This country's a great country, doesn't need any changes, blah, 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 blah. We got the president tweeting about the National Football League. Got nothing to say towards torchbearers for the white nationalist movement who showed up again in Charlottesville, Virginia last weekend. And to make matters even worse, University of Florida. Because I had a few minutes to listen to my man Joe Madison this morning. I encourage all of y'all to listen to that show every morning. I don't get the chance to listen to it all the time. But when I can, I do. Channel 126, Urban View Radio, Sirius XM. I thought I heard him say something this morning about how that saved you, some dude Richard Spencer or what have you, who is one of the torchbearers, leading the march in Charlottesville. For the white nationalist group, this dude has been invited to speak at the University of Florida. I mean, you just can't make this stuff up. I said it before and I'll say it again. Whether it's a moment or a movement remains to be seen. But I will tell you this. Don't talk to me about the president spewing patriotism. Everything about him in his 70 years on earth has shown us he cares about money and he cares about him. And when you have the National Football League front and center in his is in, in his eyesight that he's targeting at every turn, that ain't just about politics and feeding his base and all of this other stuff. That's about him exacting retribution towards owners who didn't let them in his good old boys club. That's what that's about. He seems hell bent on damaging the brand. And millions of Americans are allowing him to get away with it. 866-729-ESPN. Let's go to the phones. Let's go to Bob. You're live with Stephen A. Talk to me. Hello. Hey, how you doing today? I'm all right. Go ahead, Bob. Sam, listen, I was listening to your, I watched your show today, and it's, I was sort of angry because all those guys, Mike Dicker, uh, Jerry Jones, and Donald Trump, was able to be and participate in the Vietnam War. None of them did. And a many black men and white young white men went over there and died, and they had the most violent protests this country ever seen. They burned the flag, they burned their draft card, and they went to Canada. Everybody did, but nobody got uh, in that. But the only person they ever tried to convict that was uh, Muhammad Ali. And all I got the it. others... Went and burnt their draft card, and Jerry it. Jones, all of them, was able to participate in that hey. one. They never did. So they can't hey. talk about patriotism. All right, listen, that's a very valid point. I appreciate your call, Bob. Thank you so much, because I'm going to double-check to make sure your points are right about Jerry Jones. And I know Mike, uh, Donald Trump clearly did serve in the Vietnam War. I don't believe Mike Ditka did as well. Uh, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that Jerry Jones did, but let's double-check that nugget of information to make sure it's right on point. But what I will say to you is that you make a very, very valid point. None of them served in the war. Many Americans, black, white, and otherwise, did and lost their lives doing so. People were burning the flags and all of this stuff back then. But it goes back to what my man Joe Madison said has said on many, many occasions. This is not new. Not at all. You know, these protests, people taking stances and positions. Tommy Smith, John Carlos, 
1968 Olympics, raising their fist and how many people followed sit-ins and protests and things of that nature. This is not new. This is not new. Somebody's trying to act like it. I wonder why that is. Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it! I'm not running from what I've seen from baseball. I mean, the Los Angeles Dodgers handling the Arizona Diamondbacks the way that they did, considering the way the Diamondbacks gave them trouble during the regular season. Uh, I, I think that's impressive, and I think that that's a good sign. I think that's a good sign. Now, I want to see the Dodgers against the Cubs because to be the man, you got to beat the man. Who's the reigning, defending World Series champions? That would happen to be the Chicago Cubs. That's who I want to see the Dodgers go up against. Me personally. You got Kershaw. You got Jansen. You got Bellinger and the, and, the, and the crew, Sagan, Puig, and everybody else. I want to see if you're the best. Beat the best. That's what I want to see. I want to see no damn Washington Nationals. only reason I care about them is because Bryce Harper's there. I love my man Dusty Baker. I don't know what the hell he was doing, though, taking Scherzer out with a 1-0 lead. You don't take Max Scherzer out. You just don't. Man, they give up a run. You don't take him out. I would not have done that. But that's me. As it pertains to the Yankees, look. Nice to see Aaron Judge come out of his slump with that two-out, two-run double. Okay, Todd Frazier do the same. That's a good sign. Severino made up for his debacle, the atrocious performance in that wild card game against the Minnesota Twins when he couldn't even last more than a third of an inning to pitch seven innings, to strike out nine last night. Very impressive. Dylan Patances, I'm very concerned about him. But Conley showed up and handled his business. And I'm just of the mindset that, listen, it's 2-2. It goes back to Cleveland tomorrow night for deciding series, deciding game five. Cleveland should be the favorite. I can't imagine that Kluber will pitch like garbage for a second time in this series. But I got to tell y'all, I'm going to hold out hope that the Yankees can pull this off. I want a Yankees-Dodgers World Series. I'm unapologetic about it, even though the Houston Astros is going to be something to deal with if the Yankees get past Cleveland in this series. Uh, Houston's special. But we shall see. We shall see. 866-729-ESPN. That's 866-729-3776. Let's go back to the phones. Furman, you're live with Stephen A. What's up? Yes, sir, Mr. Smith. How are you doing today, sir? I'm all right. Go ahead. Hey, brother. Um... Real quick on this um, flag debacle. It does, 25 year retirement, it doesn't have anything to do with the flag. They just, it doesn't affect their community, so they're just coming up with an excuse because they don't want to discuss the real problems. Now, I don't know if anyone's ever told you this or you may have seen it, but every morning on every U.S. military base in the world at 8 o'clock, colors go up. If you're standing outside, you stop doing what you're doing and you salute the flag. If you drive in a car, you stop in the middle of the road until Reveille is done. At 7.55, they give you a warning letting you know in five minutes, colors. When that warning goes off, it's like you cut the light on a roach and start scattering. Military personnel running to get in the building so they don't have to salute that flag at 8 o'clock. That's disrespectful. And if any military man or woman call and tell you they haven't done it, trust me, Mr. Smith, they're lying. We've all done it. So, 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 so your point exactly is what for my listeners? Real my quick, point is What is, is your this. point? My point is this. We, we, kneeling is not, doesn't have anything to do with disrespecting military personnel, doesn't have anything to do with disrespecting the flag. It's all about what's going on in this country. And they have the constitutional right to have a peaceful protest because every military personnel raised their right hand and swore to defend the Constitution, not the flag, not the anthem. And that Constitution tells okay. us. I got it. I got it. I got your point. And I appreciate your call. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, we have something that was released in the last 30 minutes. According to our very own Adam Schefter, he has obtained a letter to chief executives and club presidents of each NFL team from Commissioner Raj Goodell, Adam Schefter got this to us 30 minutes ago. I will read the letter to you in its entirety. <clears throat> we live in a country that can feel very divided. Sports, and especially the NFL, 
brings people together and lets them set aside those divisions, at least for a few hours. The current dispute over the national anthem is threatening to erode the unifying power of our game and is now dividing us and our players from many fans across the country. I'm very proud of our players and owners who have done the hard work over the past year to listen, understand, and attempt to address the underlying issues within their communities. At our September committee meetings, we heard directly from several players about why these issues are so important to them and how we can support their work. And last week, we met with the leadership of the NFLPA and more players to advance the dialogue. Like many of our fans, we believe that everyone should stand for the national anthem. It is an important moment in our game. We want to honor our flag and our country, and our fans expect that of us. We also care deeply about our players and respect their opinions and concerns about critical social issues. The controversy over the anthem is a barrier to having honest conversations and making real progress on the underlying issues. We need to move past this controversy, and we want to do that together with our players. Building on many discussions with clubs and players, we have worked to develop a plan that we will review with you at next week's league meetings. This would include such elements as an in-season platform to promote the work of our players on these core issues, and that will help to promote positive change in our country. We want to ensure that any work at the league level is consistent with the work that each club is doing in its own community, and that we dedicate a platform that can enable these initiatives to succeed. Additionally, we will continue the unprecedented dialogue with our players. I expect and look forward to a full and open discussion on these issues when we meet next week in New York. Everyone involved in the game needs to come together on a path forward to continue to be a force for good within our communities, protect the game, and preserve our relationship with fans throughout the country. The NFL is at its best when we ourselves are unified. In that spirit, let's resolve that next week we will meet this challenge in a unified in positive way. Those are the words of Commissioner Roger Goodell to chief executives and team presidents for all NF all 32 NFL teams. Uh, we got access to a half hour ago, courtesy of Adam Schefter, NFL inside extraordinaire for ESPN. You heard what the commissioner said. I'll decipher his words, what they mean and what's probably going to happen. Moving forward in a minute, you are listening live to the Stephen A. Smith Show on ESPN Radio. Give Stephen A. a piece of your mind. He is sorry. Call him weekdays from 1 to 3 Eastern. I mean, just trash. At 866-729-3776. Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it. Like I told you, Yankees, Dodgers, Cubs, Nationals, Astros, Red, it don't matter. You know, NFL games, I mean, damn. And I and I and I, I gotta put myself on front street and, and, and say this. Because people out there are listening. I'm not apologizing for what I'm about to say. I'm tired of talking about this. I don't want to talk about it. I just have to. But I don't want to talk about this. Yes, I'm a black man, and yes, you know, I've experienced oppression and, and racism and inequality and all that. Look, we got things to overcome. There's no question. But when it's gotten to this point, it's ridiculous. And let's be clear about something here. To white America out there, you have every right to sit up there and say, damn, I just want to come and watch a football game. You have every right to do that. Every right. Every right. You know what this letter from Roger Goodell that I just spent a few minutes reading, do you know what the letter comes down to, ladies and gentlemen? We tired of this. All right, enough's enough. We heard you loud and clear. Now, we're going to have, we're going to dedicate some time for you to generate attention aimed at addressing these issues. And the NFL will do its part. But we will not do so at the expense of our game. The NFL makes $14 billion annually. 
It's projected to make $18 billion annually. Roger Goodell has been on a record that by the year 2025 or 2027, he projects the NFL will make in excess of $25 billion annually. We got folks in the streets killing one another for hundreds of dollars. Blacks, white, Hispanics, and beyond. For hundreds. And you can't understand why somebody will want to protect billions? Stop. Just stop it. Enough's enough. I'm not sitting there and saying that folks who have labeled the kneeling the way that they've done, that the president hijacking the issue and turning it into something that it isn't is right. I'm not saying all of that. I'm saying if you are the National Football League, anybody associated with the National Football League, and your objective is to get the attention focused back to football, I have no problem with you. I'm telling you right here, right now, I got a problem with Jerry Jones taking the stance that he took. But if Jerry Jones sat up there and didn't try to to wax eloquently about patriotism and all of this other stuff, and he simply said, I'm a football owner. And these dudes right here are compromising my bottom line with the sponsors. I ain't having it. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you right now, you're going to turn against Stephen A. Because I'm going to go like this. I got it, Jerry. I understand. My problem is have the courage to say it. I got no problem with a businessman telling you he's a businessman. Don't wax eloquently with me or wax poetically with me about something that I don't believe for one second that you give a damn about. But when you come to me and you say to me, look, man, my bottom line is being compromised here. I got no problems with it. When Greg Hardy fought his 10-game suspension and got it reduced to four, we had an issue with it. When Adrian Peterson was put on the commissioner's exempt list over those child abuse uh, 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 allegations, did we have a problem with it? You know why? Because sponsors said, we're getting the hell up out of here if you don't get him off that field. They got him off the field, but they still paid them. Were you whining then? Y'all better grow the hell up. Yeah, we got issues to tackle. Yes, we got issues to fight. Without question. And of course it always involves sacrifice. Without question. But where were these players when Colin Kaepernick first kneeled? Other than a handful of players who supported him, by and large, nobody did. Y'all didn't do a damn thing until Donald Trump, the president, said something and calling your sons a bees. That's when you stood up. So don't bring up Colin Kaepernick now when you spent a year ignoring him. You wanted to concentrate on football then? Concentrate on football now. I don't want to hear it. Ed, go ahead. Hello? Yes, you're on the air. Go. Ed, go ahead. Stop talking to your family. You're on the air, man. Go ahead. Okay. Okay, listen, Brother Steve. First of all, I want to thank you, man. I want to thank you for real standing up for for what it is. And I appreciate appreciate all of that, but I got to rush you because you only got like a minute. Go ahead. Listen, my issue is with Will King. And, and, and white folks who don't understand what, what they're saying, they keep trying to say we're not attacking the character. When you can go by what people say. I can't go by what a person intended. Somebody shoot me. I can't say, well, he didn't mean to shoot me. I got to go by the results of his actions and what uh, uh, the coach did and what the, what, what, what the uh, uh, owner is doing. We're going by their actions, not their intent. And Will Kane need to quit worrying about character assassination. by well, saying, my pro- well, Here's, we don't, my, problem. here's, here's my problem with you. Stop. Here's my problem with you. You call it in the Stephen A. Smith show. Zero, you're focusing on me. Most people don't know Will Kane. They're just learning Will Kane. You're assuming they know him and they know his position, and everybody doesn't know that. You call it into the Stephen A. Smith show. Stop calling in about other people that some people may not know. Focus on the subject at hand or the person you're talking to, please. Go ahead. Anyway, Stephen, I appreciate it. Let me say it again. Where are we going to hear? You're making a stance on our platform that is some people are getting suspended, some people are losing their jobs. Some people have been doing a lot of things. Jamel Hill and comes to mind. I appreciate everything you're doing. Keep up the good work, brother. I listen to, I've been listening to Madison for four years. I just want to give you some encouragement to keep speaking out. 
I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. But all of us don't feel the same exact way. And there's a lot of things that I can't touch on. And trust me, I want to, but I can't. Believe that. But in the end, what it comes down to is that, listen, we can't knock business people for being about business. Not Trump and the the vice president for politicizing things and trying to change the narrative and the focus. Hijacking it, essentially. Knock them for that. Not Jerry Jones for trying to act like he's political and patriotic when he's all about business. But if he decides to admit that he's about business, don't hold that against him. Because I'm I'm here to tell you, you compromise people bottom line, they're going to do what they can to protect it. Hour number two up next with Stephen A. and the Israel. That's just a sample of what you'll hear on the Stephen A. Smith Show. Weekdays at 1 p.m. Eastern on Sirius XM Channel 80 and the ESPN app. Want an easy way to see if you could save money on car insurance? GEICO gives you three. Call 1-800-947-AUTO. Go online to GEICO.com or stop by the GEICO office nearest you. Three ways you could save 15% or more. This is the Stephen A. Smith Show Podcast. I'm Stephen A. Hour number two. The Stephen A. Smith Show here with you for the next hour over the airways of ESPN Radio, Sirius XM Style, Channel Lady. Number to call up as always is 866-729-ESPN. That's 866-SAY-ESPN. Lots of stuff to get into. I mean, when I think about these protests and everything else, I just get so ticked off that I even got to talk about it. I'm just thinking about so many of the stories. How about Eli Manning? And the slippage. How about Odell Beckham Jr. being out for the season and whether or not the the New York Giants should just have a complete overhaul? How about the New York Jets winning more game than the Giants? And when we walked into the season thinking the Jets were going to be tanking everything and the Giants were going to win the NFC East, instead, now the Giants are in position to pursue Sam Donald out of USC. How about that? How about that? How about Jared Goff and the Los Angeles Rams wetting the bed a little bit against Seattle, even though it was a highly competitive game this past weekend? How about that? How about the Chargers finally winning the game against those New York Giants? How about that? How about that? How about what teams are, what teams exist that we should actually put a fork in? How about that issue? How about touching on that? Whether it's the Giants, it's the 49ers, it's Cleveland Browns with Hugh Jackson being 1-20 and 20 as the head coach with Arizona. By the way, having just acquired Adrian Peterson from the New Orleans Saints. They traded him from New Orleans to Arizona this morning. Because this dude, Chris Johnson, suffered for Derek Johnson. Can't even average three yards a carry for Arizona, who has the worst rushing attack in football. And as a result, they had to go about the business of acquiring Adrian Peterson, hoping he could give them something. And now he's got something to prove because the only team that wanted them was was New Orleans, which is why he ended up there to begin with. How about that storyline? I mean, whether it's the Giants, the 49ers, the Browns, the Cardinals, the Chargers, whomever. How about that? How about having that conversation? Can't do it. Just can't do it. It's not there for us. How about talking about the Cowboys instead of Jerry Jones and him demanding that the players stand? Maybe he's trying to draw attention and win headlines on something other than actually winning football games because he knows his team is not going to win this year. How about that? Mind you, I already brought up baseball. Nobody wants to talk baseball, huh? Nobody wants to talk about how good these Dodgers are looking right now, huh? Nobody wants to talk about that. Nobody wants to talk about how the Yankees were down 2-0 after Jerry Joe Girardi wet the bed by not challenging a call against Cleveland where the ball hit the tip of the bat instead of the pitcher and ultimately loading the bases, and then a grand slam was given up to this kid Lindor by Chad Green. And if, if Joe Girardi had made the right call, series might be over. And now he had to humble himself and acknowledge he just messed up. It was a bad night at the office. And yet these idiots out there calling for him to be fired. Joe Girardi's a great manager. And he's an upstanding man. He has no business being talked about in that fashion. New York should be lucky to have him. But we ain't talking about that. 
or how the Yankees have come back from a 2-0 hole and they've now tied the series 2-2 against who some believe to be the best team in baseball in the Indians because even though they won two games less than the Dodgers, they think they're better than the Dodgers. Nobody wants to talk about that, huh? Nobody wants to talk about the Cubs. Here they come. Joe Madden and the crew. Or how Dusty Baker sat up there and took Max Scherzer out of the game. Scherzer of all people who hadn't even given up a run. And you took him out the game. Nobody wants to talk about that, huh? No, that's not important. All we want to talk about these damn protests. And if you're wondering why me, as a black man, is tired of talking about these protests. You know why? Because it's not about the anthem. I refuse to allow people to believe it's about the anthem or disrespecting the flag. It's about what Colin Kaepernick said it was about. But guess who I blame for not addressing the issue with the fervor it deserves? I blame the players as much as anybody. You can kneel all you want to. What you doing about it? fact of the matter is that you didn't really start kneeling collectively until President Trump spoke out against the NFL. If he hadn't called you SOBs, would you be kneeling? Would this be a national firestorm? This isn't in support of Kaepernick. This is in support of you who's defending yourself against what the president called you. That's what this is about which is why he has successfully hijacked the issue, at least for the moment. That's what this is about. Everybody want to get in an uproar. Start playing chess instead of checkers. Maybe I'll support it more. Think. At the end of the day, other than your soul, other than the right to vote, the biggest interest instrument for change is dollars. Did you know that in the black community, we spend over $1 trillion, $1.3 trillion annually? Did you know that? How much of it do we spend in our own community? On our own products? And oh, by the way, when we get that money, think about this for a second. See, one of the things that I'm unapologetic about, and I will stand up here, you can call me whatever you want. Let me tell y'all something about me. I can be as loud as they come. I can be as forceful and rebellious as they come. But I make no apologies by making sure that the first priority is doing my job and also representing my company first. Just like those players, as much as they want to look out for themselves, they have an obligation to represent the National Football League. I have an obligation to represent ESPN and Walt Disney. I don't work for myself. I got my hand out for that check that I receive twice a month. And if you are at your job, so do you. And this notion that you get to do what you want to do, when you want to do, how you want to do it, while you got your hand out for somebody else's money is stupid. Because it's ineffective and will never be sustainable. I was listening to the Joe Madison show this morning, and I bring him up because of my admiration and respect for him. Even though I also listen to my girl, Karen Hunter, just like I listen to my man, Mark Levin and Sean Hannity with his crazy self. But let's understand something here. There was a caller that called in this morning to Joe Madison. And this brother is, they don't call him a black eagle for nothing. And he's a lion. Fearless. And even he said to one caller, let me make sure I check with my lawyers first before I allow you to go to such and such a place because I have to make sure there's nothing that's violated in terms of company policy. I'm paraphrasing that last part because I'm assuming that's what he meant. What I'm saying to you is that we all have people to answer to. We can be rebellious. We can make things happen. We can push for what we want to push for. But don't you ever think that you get to operate solo and with impunity when you cash in a check from somebody else's hands. See, we don't talk about that enough because we want to act like we get to do what we want to do. 
Stephen A. Smith does not get to do what he wants to do. I represent my bosses in this company. And I speak loud and proud and clear. And sometimes I touch that line. But I'll never cross it intentionally. Not so long as I have my hand out for somebody else's check. That's the real world. Your own children who have to listen to you. Why do they have to listen to you? Because you gave birth to them. It's because you take care of them. And you are the authoritative figure in your life, in their life. See, these are realities we don't want to embrace. But in case you haven't noticed, they're realities that never change. And they're indiscriminate. Wake the hell up. And stop acting like you don't know. Catch the Stephen A. Smith Show live on 98.7 ESPN New York, ESPN LA 710, and Sirius XM Channel 80. You just can't make this stuff up. Weekdays from 1 to 3 Eastern. Hey girl, have you done something new with your scales? Using new moisturizer? Nice. It really brings out the hazel in your eyes. Oh, hold on. Are you using whitening strips too? Your fangs look good, girl. Really good. A really charming snake charmer? Surprising. What's not surprising? How much you could save by switching to Geico. Wait, what? Have you been doing Pilates too? Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. You're listening to the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. To the phones we go right here on the Stephen A. Smith Show ESPN Radio. Jeff, you're live with Stephen A. Go ahead, man. Hey, thanks, Stephen A. for taking my call. Go ahead. Uh, I wanted to start off by saying, uh, "Let's go Yankees." I hope they win tomorrow night. And yeah, um, they, they got their work cut out for them because I don't think Kluber is going to stink up the joint for a second time in the same series. But I'm yeah, I know. I, I believe that what you're saying, but I, I, I trust the Yankees. Mm-hmm. Uh, but to get on the subject of the protests or whatnot, I understand that you don't really like talking about it. Nobody really, nobody really does. But I wanted to just say a quick quote. It's from Martin Luther King. It says, "Our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter." Stop right there. Stop right there. Uh 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 no 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 Jeff. You know why that don't apply? You want me to tell you why that don't apply? I'm listening. We've been talking about it. This ain't the first time. You spoke about it. I've been speaking about it for months. Uh Uh-uh. Don't apply. There's no such thing as silence. If anything, we've talked about it too much. Stephen A., I'm not applying it to just you in general. I'm just saying. I know that. I'm I'm talking about all of us collectively. At some point in time, stop talking to me about talking about it and ask what we're going to do about it. You've done your job, and I appreciate your passion when it comes to this subject, I strongly do. And I understand why you don't feel like talking about it anymore. I, I can honestly agree. It's just that I, it bothers me. It rakes my nerves because I don't agree with the way Cam Newton did what he did last week in regards to that female reporter. It's just that it bothers me when I see what happened to Jamel and what happened with Trump. I feel like he's being a bully. Well, listen, it could bother you all you want to. And I'm not in a position to speak on those issues because obviously that's in-house stuff. And I'm not going to get into all of that. What I would say to you, however, I will reiterate my points. Every company has policies. Every company. Every employee is aware of them. And as a result, when you take a stance, sometimes you're going to pay a price for it. Cam Newton, you brought up Cam Newton, Jeff. Cam Newton, he may have made an error. He may have erred in judgment, et cetera, et cetera. But the product in terms of yoga that he was pushing, by and large, their audience is women. They had to take a position. Now, who thought that was fair? Nobody thought that was fair per se. You think they care? Their interest is not fairness. Their interest is the bottom line. They didn't do this. They didn't make a judgment against Cam Newton because of fairness. They said, man, we got to protect our product. We about to, we have people going to scurry away from us because it, co- it costed us money instantly. That's the bottom line, but, and I we can't, can't act like we we can't act like we don't know that. I just feel like that's the whole systematic oppression. That's what this conversation. Let is me about. ask you a question: What do you do for a living? How old are you, Jeff? I'm, I'm 30 years old. All right, you're 30 years old. What do you do for a living? 
Uh, currently, I'm, I'm unemployed right now. Okay. What were you? When you were employed, where, where were you employed doing? I was, I was doing fire guard work and fire safety fire, director fire, work. Fire, fire, fire. All right. So let's say, for example, you spoke against or you did something that compromised whatever your job description was and that of your company. What would you expect to happen to you? I would expect consequences. Well, what I'm saying to you is that's life. You don't get to whine and moan about it. You had to deal with it because you know that to be a reality. And that's what I'm saying. When I talk about us all understanding the world of business, you have to know that. You have to know that. Now, if there's a discrepancy as to whether it was it, it, it was legitimate or not, that's a different ballgame. But if your purported violation in the case of Cam or anybody else is what it is, and it's clear why a company is doing what they're doing. What is there to say? I can't disagree with you, but at the same time, it's hard to accept what he's doing as a president and, and, and take that as normal. Tell me, tell me, tell me. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question, Jeff. Are you, you're black, are you not? Yes. Now, let me ask you this question. If somebody white spoke that way about President Obama at the time, what would have happened? The, our president in, in power right now said he wasn't born here. No, no, no. What I'm saying to you is that if somebody attacked the way that President Trump is being attacked, and trust you me, I have no empathy for him. You know, the, as far as I'm concerned, he's been a disaster because of the manner in which he behaves. It's appalling to me. I'm not getting into his politics. I don't like the way he, as a statesman, he represents our nation. I think he's too damn petty. Having said all of that, if we had, when President Obama was in office, if we had white individuals, and we did in some cases, when you have folks speaking out against them in the fashion that they were, what was our reaction? Honestly, that's a tough question to answer. Because All right, well, then I, you know what? Then I got to go. Have a nice day. I ain't got time to be entertaining. It's a live radio show. You should know the answer. The fact of the matter is, is that people would have been in an uproar. Those white folks would have been called racist. You can't have it both ways. We live in a democracy for a reason. You don't like Trump and what he's doing. Guess what? Two million black folks that didn't show up to vote for him, that to vote for Hillary, that showed up to vote for Obama in 2012. You'll show up this time, won't you? And if you're Hillary Clinton, you'll be more adroit in your campaign strategy to make sure you campaign in the areas where those electoral college votes are prevalent so you won't get outmaneuvered by the man. And the liberals and the progressives who are complaining about the process and all of this stuff about whatever connection there was to Russia, maybe you'll do your due diligence before the man is elected this time around. We live in a democracy for a reason. No matter how bad things appear, we always have the capability to turn things around because guess what? He ain't going to last forever. He gets four years. Worst case scenario, eight years. This is America. We overcome all the time. And we will do it again. Period. Because we don't have our way now, we got to lose it. As bad as things appear, all I'm concerned about really is that I hope he don't spark World War III. Outside of that, anything else, we'll overcome. We'll overcome. Because we're America. That's why. Marty, go ahead. Stephen, hey, thank you for the thank you for the conversation, man. Go ahead, man. Hey, hey first of all, uh, I want to congratulate you on your acting debut. I hope you do more of that. Second, go Yankees. And my the point I want to make is that uh, you know everybody wants to talk about Martin Luther King and his speeches, but what's really behind the man? The man is about a God. Where is God in this situation? When Tim Tebow went to kneel down in the in the end zone, it was a they didn't want the NFL didn't want him to do that. That's no, 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 do, don't do that. But yet, the owners are basically political. They never liked Trump from the beginning, and it's all about politics. And yeah, the owners don't care about the players. They're, it's all about money, the bottom line. So yeah, you're well, right. It's about right. Well, it's about politics with Trump. It's about money with the owners. And it's about retribution with Trump, in my opinion, as well, because they didn't let him in that good old boys club. Y'all are listening to somebody right now, Marty, that interviewed the president 
before he ran for office about the Buffalo Bills ownership situation. He wanted to own the Buffalo Bills. He thought that he had a good shot at getting it. It didn't happen. And he believes the owners cost him that. Now, there's everything about him that tells you retribution's a part of his M.O., as petty as it may be. Everything about his resume tells you that. Or everything about his history tells you that. Why would we think any differently now? The center, and so is the rest of the NFL players, and we're all centers. So where's God in all this? How come listen, we can't kneel listen, down listen, and listen. the flag? I heard you the first time. There are certain people that don't weigh God as heavily in their lives as you do. It's unfortunate, but we both know that's true. Make another point, my brother. The point is, is how about how about not being hypocritical and allowing a player to kneel down in the end zone? They're not going to do it. Now what? They're not going to do it because it's bad for business, which you just admitted a few minutes earlier. Because it's a bad, it's bad for business. You know that. I know that, Marty. Why are you acting like you don't know this? But, but that's where our values have gone. But that's, that's where it's been, to... Marty. That's where it's been. Now what? Well, then let's listen to Martin Luther King and talk about God when we speak about him. It's all about his great speech. I got you. Man... I got you. I got you. Have a nice day, Marty. This is not church. When I'm in New York, I go to the Christian Cultural Center. I listen to my man, Pastor A.R. Bernard, who I've known for over 22 years and I love dearly. He's my spiritual father. Marty, I didn't mean to cut you off. I know you're not wrong. But it's not reality to think that people are going to do that. They're not going to call up a radio show and, and, and say, let's talk about God. They're not going to do that. So you stood on hold and wasted your time. Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it! I need to say something to y'all personally. Because we all know what ESPN personally is in the news for today as it pertains to my colleague and friend, Jamel Hill. Let me state something very, very clear. For those clamoring for me to say something on Twitter, let me be clear. Kick rocks. She is my colleague and friend. This company employs me. What I'm doing and what others are doing and how we're expressing ourselves behind the scenes is none of your damn business. You want to think that because somebody doesn't go off on Twitter that they don't have a position, be the new fool that you are. It's an internal matter. It's none of your damn business. Does ESPN want us talking about these things? Of course not. But that applies to anything or anybody involving company business because it's company business. And when you see stuff in the blogosphere or you see stuff on Twitter or anything like that, you know what that is? That's a violation. Because none of us are supposed to do it to any of us. Period. That much I will say. You can call me whatever you want. You can kiss my you-know-what. I know what I do. I know the battles I fight. You hear me on radio every day. You hear me on first take every day. You know what I bring to the table. But when it comes to in-house matters, if you'll recall, you didn't hear me comment on my own suspension. When Hugh Douglas was let go, you didn't hear anything from me. When folks were laid off, you didn't hear anything from me. Other than wishing them the best and Godspeed and nothing but love for them and speaking about them with deference, with reverence, and with love. The in-house particulars are none of your damn business. You got an issue with that? The name is John Skipper. He's the president and the boss. And at his choosing, the spokesman for issues pertinent to our company. Now, if he had a problem with me addressing him, that's different. But he doesn't have that problem. His door is always open to me. 
And when we talk about what it is we talk about, I will never violate my private conversations with him. You don't like that? I'll say it again. Kick, kick rocks and grow the hell up and come to me when you want to talk about your boss or company and let me give you an education on what teamwork really entails. That's all I'm going to say about that. Don't start now, won't be none. Derek, you're live with Stephen A. on ESPN Radio. What's up? Derek, you're on the air. Go ahead. Thank you for taking my call, sir. Yeah, you got a lot of wind, though, Derek. You got to roll up your window or something, brother. Listen, well, listen, I'm listen sorry, to me. sir. I'm an over the truck, over the road truck driver. Can you hear me now? Yeah, go ahead. I'm going to try. Go ahead. Oh, okay, message, message to the NFL players from the common black man from the inner city of Cleveland, Ohio. Stand up for me. Have a voice for me. There's no cameras where I come from, Mr. Smith. I, I'm not calling to contradict, but I'm telling them NFL players, even though you told them to stop because you're ready to get back to football, football doesn't matter to me no more. I need to have... Derek, I need I need them to do this. I need stop, to stop, 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 stop. stop right there, Derek, because I got a question for you. Can you hear me? Yes. If they had never protested, ever, if they had never protested, and they just had gone about the business of playing football every single weekend, would you have the same position? Absolutely. Uh, I would be a little bit um, Eric, I think, Derek, Derek, let me say this to you. I'm going to say this to you respectfully, and I'm going to give you an opportunity to respond. I think you're lying. You want me to tell you why I think you're lying, Derek? Because... The reason you're thinking about it all is because they've been doing it. You have to remember something. I'm not telling them to stop kneeling. I'm not telling them to stop protesting just because I'm tired of talking about it. I'm saying that the issue has been hijacked. You're not talking about what the original intent of the protests were. We're talking about them responding to Trump calling them SOBs. We're talking about the red, white, and blue, the flag. That's not what the issue was about. That's what I'm tired of talking about. You want to talk to me about oppression and inequality and brutality on the part of law enforcement officials and the issues that really permeate us as a society and a community? Oh, we could talk about that all day. That's not what we've been talking about. That's what I'm tired of. I understand that, Mr. Smith, but the, don't fall for the banana in the tailpipe. I'm no, not you don't, president. You don't, you don't know. You don't fall for the banana in the tailpipe because you want them to continue protesting at their expense, jeopardizing their careers, but you don't have an end game. That's the problem. I don't have the financial means to do what they can do. No, no, no I'm not talking about do, that's not. I'm not talking I, about that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a plan of action. What is the kneeling accomplishing? What is it accomplishing? What's the goal? What's the end game? That's what I'm talking about. There isn't one. What is accomplishing when I have to explain to my son why they're kneeling? He understands now. He's 12 years old. That's how I fight it, by raising my son. To well, 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 let me ask you a question. Well, the if home. they did it already, if they did it already, let me ask you a question. When did you explain this to your son? Oh, since you already that, said I was lying. No, no, no. I, no, no, no. no I, asked you, I asked you a question. When did you explain this to your son? My son is 12, Mr. No, 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 I, no, 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 sir, sir. Did you explain it three weeks ago, a month ago, a week ago? That's what no, I'm asking. No, when did you explain no, it to I'm, him? Six years ago. I was okay. just explaining you. Listen to me. Listen, listen, listen. Because I'm doing a radio show. I'm trying to establish the point. When did you explain it to him? When was that, Derek? Um, Colin Kaepernick, sir. Okay. Did you explain it to him every single Sunday? My son comprehends well. I didn't have to. Right. Exactly. So it's already been explained. That's my point. It's already been explained. It's already been explained. So if you've done it already and he comprehends well and he gets what happened and why, why does it have to continue when it has no end game? It doesn't stop there, Mr. Smith. I, I didn't say it should stop. I, I have to continue telling my son how to hold 
both hands on the steering wheel when you get pulled over. But okay. America doesn't have this problem. I have to continue telling my son to be the strongest black man he can be. I have to continue telling my son that God is going to get him through this. And and I, I, I totally respect the black players of the NFL for standing up for okay. the communist black man I got who it. do not have the voice. I got it, but nobody's telling them not to. What they're saying is you have to have an end game because when all you're doing is that and it's compromising the bottom line. That's something that what's going to happen if all of a sudden millions of people walk away from the game and the game is not being supported and they no longer have the platform to protest. Where are you going to be at then? Where I'm going to be at then, I will still continue to thank you. All right. Got you. No problem. I'll do the same thing. I'm thanking them now. What I'm trying to say is still in all. That's not good enough. That's not good enough. You can thank them now. You can continue to thank them. What difference does it make? If ultimately you end up costing them more than they ever should have had to pay when the message has already been sent. Want to be a part of the show? Hit Stephen A. up weekdays from 1 to 3 Eastern at 866-729-3776. Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it! Let me say this real quick to move beyond this point. I didn't sit up there and say that I want guys to start kneeling and stop kneeling. As a matter of fact, I said when it came to Jerry Jones, I wish the players called this bluff. It's real easy to say that with Ezekiel Elliott and Dez Bryant are your players. They're in no position to, to, to be come across as insubordinate. And Dak Prescott's a second-year player. What if it was Michael Bennett or Richard Sherman or Malcolm Jenkins on your squad? Would Jerry Jones have said that? I said what I'm specifically tired of is talking about it. And the reason why I'm tired of talking about it is because it's not about the flag and disrespecting the flag. It's about the issues that Derek brought up, that, Con, that, that Colin Kaepernick brought up. But nobody's talking about it because it's been successfully hijacked by Trump and now the vice president. So I'm tired of talking about an issue that is not the issue to me. You want to talk about the real issue? I'm all ears. That's not what we're doing here. Period. Jordan, you're live with Stephen A. What's up? Hey, Stephen, how you doing, brother? I'm all right. Go ahead. Um, so I'm I'm ashamed of you, man. How how you gonna how you gonna sit there and get scared in the in the following minutes of that Cowboy uh, Packers game? I called yesterday. I watched your show wasn't on yesterday, so I was saving it for today. Um, you knew with that minute and tw- thirteen seconds left that he was gonna do something special. And I was sitting there talking to my wife. She said, "You think you do?" I said, "Yes." Tom Brady what are you? What, 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 you don't have that much time. What are you talking about? How I was going to sit there scared about Aaron Rodgers and the Packers? What are you talking about? Because yesterday on your show, you said it getting on your nerves. <laughs> no, what I'm saying is, is that you know Aaron Rodgers had a minute and 13 seconds left. What I was afraid of was that the Dallas Cowboys were going to take their time about scoring because they were running it down Green Bay's throat, and Aaron Rodgers wouldn't get the ball back in time. That was the only fear I had. Yeah, that, that was, that's what I was telling my wife. And I was sitting there, and my, uh, a friend of mine, she texted me, said, I'll bet you 25 on the game. I thought, cool. And I said, well, I see what happened. This is when the Packers was already down. And I knew what Aaron Rodgers was going to do, and I knew he was going to make magic happen. Can I ask you a question? And, and Can I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question? How did you know what he was going to do when you didn't even know if he would get the ball back because the Dallas Cowboys were running dent down Green Bay's defense's throat, and on top of it all, they were running out the clock? How did you know like that he's he, going to even get the ball back? Like you keep saying, Aaron Rodgers is a bad man. Goodbye, that man. Much time- goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. You're not making sense. I asked you a question. How did you know he was going to get the ball back? And you're going to tell me Aaron Rodgers is a bad man. That has nothing to do with my question. Answer the question next time. Mustafa, you're live with Stephen A. Real quick, go ahead. Yes, yeah, so, so, of course, what Jerry Jones is doing is he's aligning his, his what he said with the interests of the organization, what the brand is, because it's America's team. But mm-hmm. we all know it's about protecting the bottom line, but it's wishful thinking to say that he's going to admit that's what it's about. He's never going to admit that, it's a, that he's a businessman and he's only doing it to protect his I bottom know that. line. He's going to say what Americans want to hear, okay? And the, the, the other point about Mike Ditka, what he said, I mean, even far-right conservatives, extreme far-right conservatives will never say what he said for the most part. 
I mean, it's alarming, and uh, it's just uh, something even I believe as a young guy saying that, you know, um, it's something that should never be mentioned, and it just it's old, comes across as an old, senile old man. So. Oh, you talk about Mike Dicker, no question about it. No, I don't disagree with you at all. I mean, it's, it, he's definitely lost it. Appreciate the call, though, man. Thank you. BT in White Plains, you're live with Stephen A. What's up? Talk to me. Hey, Stephen A., um, long-time listener, first-time caller. Go ahead, man. Um, had, had the pleasure of meeting you last time Knicks made the playoffs, you and Ryan Rucco down at Clyde's place. Appreciate it. Sincere condolences to your mom. She was great. I had a great one. I know what this feels like. And Thank early you. happy birthday to you. I, um, in terms of Pat, um, Cowboys being a Mercury team, they could never be a Mercury team for me. I'm a Green Bay Packers fan from the days on Lombardi. Um, also, the Knicks, I felt hopefully they're going the right direction now that they got rid of Phil Jackson. I thought he had a heart from New York when um, this triangle should have been Chicago, L.A., New York, but it, it wasn't there. And I'm sorry to see Melo leave without the help, but hopefully he can, he can win a championship somewhere else. Uh, and if I ever had the money, I would buy the Knicks, and I'd like you said you would be my GM because you would at least have a heart for the Knicks and bring a championship here. I don't know how long right. it's going to take. I would do. I would do my best. I tell you that much. I do a better job than what's been done. I can tell you that. But I got to go. Thanks a lot, BT. Appreciate you, man. Thank you so much, uh, Rodney. Real quick, you got like thirty seconds. Go ahead. Yeah, how's it going, Steve? I'm all right. You got thirty seconds. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm just uh, talking about the Terry Jones uh, threatening these guys that he's going to bench them. And, uh, you know, you guys want to say it's not political. It is political. It became political when he supported Donald Trump. So he cannot turn around and tell them what they can't do in that, in that realm. Because well, it's political. It's political. It's political with Trump. It's political with Trump. With Jerry Jones, it's about that bottom line. And, 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 the, and, the, and, the, and the boss telling them, well, we don't know if y'all vote for that boy. Y'all might not have no job. That's the same thing. That's unconstitutional for him to do that. And he has no right to tell them they cannot stand for this flag. Well, we're about to find out. We're about to find out. Enough. We're about to find out. I got your point. We're about to find out. I wouldn't say that, though. You don't see them doing it since he said it, right? Talk to y'all in 22 hours. Stephen A. signing off. Peace and love. That's just a sample of what you'll hear on the Stephen A. Smith Show. Weekdays at 1 p.m. Eastern on Sirius XM Channel 80 and the ESPN app.